We decided to go up to the shelter to pick up one of the dogs that needed to go to the vet. And when we were there, we got a tour of the shelter and of the facility. We walked through the cattery and Dee showed us some of the cats that were in there. And there were some really wild cats that would hiss and scratch and, you know, didn't want to be touched. And then there were these the kitten enclosure. And when Dee opened the door, I've had cats when I was younger and they're very independent. They're very headstrong in what they want and when they want it. This little kitten just came out and just wanted to play with me. I was sort of saying hello and giving it a pat, but it just wouldn't leave me alone, kept jumping up, kept rubbing her face on my face and just really connecting with me and wasn't interested in anything else but engaging in me. To the point where I put her inside my jacket and she just stayed inside there in the warmth inside my jacket and just would look up at me and just really tried connecting with me. My daughter always said that she wanted a kitten and I just, with running a dog business and having 15 dogs ourselves, knew that it was potentially not going to happen. Anyway, I looked up at Sam and said, what do you think? <laughs> Do you think that we could we could introduce a cat to our crazy life with dogs? So we also have another animal in the car. <laughs> and in, in the bus. It's not a dog. No, it's not a dog. <laughs> Evie has been talking about this for quite a while and we just couldn't see how it would ever work. Also got a little kitten on board. <laughs> The tiny little kid. It's so small. So we're not sure if this is going to work out or not. We're going to try to make it work. Yeah. The mum got hit by a car, so she died. Yeah, so it's just coming. And they were teeny, like three or four days old, I think. Yeah. And so, um, dear D and Don uh, bottle fed these kittens and a yeah. pan raised them. I think they're three months old now. Yeah. We're going to make it work. Yeah. We also got a little surprise for Evie. What do you think about me, Evie? I don't, I don't know. What's something that you've always wanted? Has cats at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the? There was a lot of what ifs and how's this going to go and the conversation of are we crazy, you know, we, we've got 15 dogs that live in our lounge room plus uh, all the dogs that come up for our business and, and we've got some really serious dogs doing rehab, how is a little kitten going to survive? And, you know, we started making plans as to how to keep the kitten separate and not let them have any contact with the dogs and that was a little over three months ago now <laughs> and now we have little kitty Rose who is a permanent member of our pack. The first couple of days and the first couple of nights was very much focused around trying to communicate to the dogs that this wasn't an animal that we chased, this was an animal that we respected and allowed to share the lounge room with. And I, I was very surprised at how quickly the dogs accepted that message. It's just for pie. She's got a short nose, so she gets real close. <laughs> I thought it was a good thing that I had such a relationship with the dogs that as soon as I communicated that this is not the enemy, this is uh, one of us, they accepted that and then the dogs went from full-blown 
predatory drive prey yeah. mode to complete relax play mode. It's really, really good to see just how excited the dogs get when they start playing with the cat and uh, how respectfully they play with her. So yeah. it's uh, yeah. it's worked out really, really well. Yeah. Oh, good girl, Miss Red. These guys have absolutely no concerns about a swipe on the nose. Good girl. Yeah. I can't believe I got a kitty. I'm gonna keep her forever. I'm not sure that she thinks she's a dog, but she definitely enjoys dog company. She will ambush any one of the dogs as they walk down the hallway or sleeping in the lounge room or on the couch. And at first the dogs are like, what's happening? Uh, while this little kitten is, you know, attached to their armpit and chewing on their elbow. I think they're all getting an extra experience of life with sharing sharing the safe place with this little cat who absolutely loves and adores all the dogs brother and sisters initially as we introduce a new dog the cat is always very nervous to start with like she shows signs of gee you're a big dog she can read my body language, which is more focused on making sure the dog is calm and not going to lunge or chase the cat. However, as the cat can see that I've got control over the dogs, she starts to relax and almost to the point where she starts to show off a little. The dogs are really focused on, on Kitty when they first come in. Um, I'll put them in a drop and make sure that they just get exposed to the cat without being in an aroused state. And the cat can see this and then so starts to parade in front of the dog. It's like, yeah, you're looky but no touchy. <laughs> you know, she's got a really uh, uh, funny attitude. And as soon as the dogs stop seeing the cat as prey and start to accept the cat for who she is and accept that she's not going anywhere, um, she makes little friendships with them, comes up and says hello and rubs against them as they're sleeping and sometimes just rolls on her back underneath the, the dogs to say, play with me. She has started to shine towards a few of the dogs that, you know, Rosie, for example, who's very playful in nature. And no matter what the cat does, Rosie will always engage in play. So Rosie could be fast asleep and then the cat will come launching and jump off the couch five feet across the lounge room, land on the back of Rosie and start attacking her tail. And Rosie would just quickly get up and start playing respectfully with her. And so they've got a really, really good relationship, Rosie and Kitty Rose. Joey was one of those ones that really stalked Kitty when uh, we first brought her home. Would stand perfectly still, just staring at the cat and we would be telling her to not engage and, and that kind of thing. And then finally, it was one night where the cat just sprang out of nowhere and launched across the, the lounge and Joey sprung up as if to be like, what was that? And then instantly went into a play bow and started jumping around. And Joey's quite agile and fast herself. So having this smaller, faster and more agile animal around, Joey found really entertaining. And uh, they've had some really highly active moments of play, which has been pretty cool. And then on the opposite end, you've got Cutie Pie, who is a friend to everyone. And, you know, you initially, it was funny because the cat would launch these attacks on Cutie Pie and Cutie Pie would just sit there and just not even acknowledge that the cat was there, you know, as if to just be like, oh, is that all you got? <laughs> I'm not, not even worth the reaction. And the cat would be hanging off Cutie Pie's little scroll tail and it would almost be like Cutie Pie would be yawning. It was a really interesting scenario. But then 
Cutie Pie would start playing with her and they'd play some hide and seek and it was a really conducive relationship for the first couple of days and uh, but then as the cat grew in confidence she she started to play with the the bigger dogs I know that there are quite a few pet owners out there that have cats and dogs but I don't know that there would be that many pet owners out there that own 15 quite large dogs and also have one tiny little kitten. It does seem like it would be a bit of an odd scenario. We thought we were a little bit crazy for attempting it initially, but looking back, Kitty Rose has been an amazing addition to our family. We don't regret it at all. I know, a little, a little flying fox. <laughs> <laughs>